Hey, to know in high school, this is Mr. Raiden back again with Electrochemistry Vodcast Part 2. Um, this is your last vodcast for spring break, and, uh, and don't be afraid to do some extra studying on any other questions. As we come back, we'll be uh, jumping into Electrochem, and then we'll be into our review till the AP exam. So let's get to it. Um, we're going to start off by finding out how to calculate the standard cell potential, this E with this little degree symbol. That little degree symbol means standard. At one at 25 degrees Celsius, it's standard conditions. Okay, and we have two metals. We have zinc, and we have silver. Zinc, and we have silver. Um, this is similar to what what you saw on the first vodcast, but I'm going to actually show you how I got those half reactions. Okay, and how we're going to get what we call the voltage or the standard cell potential. Okay, and in order to do this, we have to go to the standard reduction potential chart. Okay, that chart that's often on the back of your your uh, periodic table. And there's all of these half reactions and something to keep note of, every single one of these reactions are gaining electrons. If you see, the electrons are in the re reactant side, which means they're being gained, which means every single one of these reactions are reduction reactions. They're reduction half reactions. And so, in this one, we're looking for zinc and we're looking for silver. You can see right in the middle of that one, middle of the page, you can see there's silver just jumping out at you there. Okay, And when we go in and we find our two half reactions at 25 degrees Celsius, we see we have silver plus one plus an electron gives you silver. And that gives you an E, or a voltage of 0.8 volts. And the other one is zinc plus two plus two electrons gives you zinc solid. And that is has an E of negative 0.76 volts. Now something to keep in mind is if the overall E is positive, the reaction is spontaneous. If the overall E is negative, the reaction will need electrolysis or electricity to proceed because it is not spontaneous. It needs energy in order to proceed. So this reaction right here, this reduction reaction that we have, it is spontaneous. So we're going to have to flip one of these two reactions. Can you see which one we're going to have to flip? Of course, we're going to flip the negative because we want to make it positive. We want to overall make everything positive. And so when we flip the reaction, now keep in mind, the reactions that we don't flip are called reduction reactions because they're gaining electrons, which means the one reaction we do flip is automatically our oxidation reaction. Okay, And so when we flip it, you can see what happened. We didn't do anything to the first reaction, it stayed the same, but we flipped the second reaction and it became positive 0.76 volts, just like in Hess's law when we flip a reaction. The only difference with Hess's law is if we multiply things by 2 or by 3 or anything, it doesn't change your voltage. And so what do we have to do? We have to get our electrons the same. Do you see the top reaction has one electron, the bottom reaction has two electrons. So what do we have to change? We got to make a two, a two, and a two. We got to multiply all our coefficients by two in order to have the same number of electrons. But if you see, it didn't change our voltage. Our voltage is still 0.8 volts. Do not change that voltage. Okay, the voltage is independent of the coefficients. What do we do at that point? We add everything up. We add all of our reactants together, all of our products together, and all of our voltages together. And so we have zinc solid plus two silver plus ones giving you zinc plus two plus two silver solids. And you can see the zinc is going from a solid to aqueous. The silver is going from aqueous to a solid. So the silver is actually gaining in mass. The zinc is actually getting lost in mass. And it gives us a voltage, an overall voltage of what we would read on a voltmeter of 1.56 volts. And you can see there's two electrons that are transferred. That's as easy as, it's, it's, it can't be any easier than that. Okay, you're gonna flip one reaction, get the electrons the same, add them up, and that's it. That's all you gotta do. There are some equations to uh, take a look at electrochem in thermo and electrochem in stoic. Our electrochem in thermo equation is delta G, this is where we find out that it's spontaneous, is equal to negative N. The N is the number of electrons that we're transferring. F is a constant, it never changes, called Faraday's constant. It's 96,500 coulombs for every one mole. And we have our E. Our E is, of course, our standard cell potential, what we got in voltage. Okay. And so the uh, electrochemistry with stoichiometry, we have an equation there which is current, which is in amps, that's I, is equal to Q 
over T. Q is uh, coulombs, our charge in coulombs. And so let's say we know our current and we know our time. Let's just say, for instance, uh, we produce 120 amps of current, 120 amps in, say, 60 seconds. I would have to give that to you, 60 seconds, for the reaction that we had. And so what would happen is we would multiply those together, and that would give us our charge in coulombs, our charge in coulombs. Once we knew our charge in coulombs, we could, of course, just do a bunch of ratios, 96,500 coulombs for every one mole of electrons. What did I know in this reaction, in the reaction that we just did? That we had two moles of electrons that were transferred for every one mole of zinc, for every one mole of zinc. Let's just say we're trying to find zinc here. And we have 63 grams for every one mole of zinc. It's a bunch of ratios, and we end up getting 2.35 grams of zinc. In order to produce 120 volts for 60 seconds, we need approximately 2.35 grams of zinc. And so really, guys, all this is is a ratio problem from one side to the next.